In this video, I'm going over symbolic links and its absolute power that it has. Uh, they're great for doing a whole variety of things that I'm going to show you in this video. This video is brought to you by Purism, makers of the Librem 5 phone. Get yours today because pre-orders are going up at the end of July and the phone will be releasing in Q3 of this year. Now, this video is gonna be based in Linux because that's the operating system I use. Uh, however, please note, these same principles apply to Windows. Instead of using LN, which is what I'm using in Linux, you're gonna use MKLink in Windows. And I've done symbolic links a lot of times in a whole variety of operating systems, both Linux and Windows, and they're just so fantastic and powerful. And I wanna show you a couple examples today to get you started both file symbolic links and folder symbolic links. For the file, I'm gonna move a script into a separate directory and then create a symbolic link to it. And for the folder, I'm gonna actually move a game from one of my uh, smaller drives to one of my bigger drives and then do a symbolic link on that small drive just so I don't have to change anything in either Lutris or any of my launchers uh, that reference this game. It'll automatically redirect without any issue. This is extremely powerful, especially when moving like a Steam library. You can move your entire library to a new drive and just create one symbolic link and everything would be right with the world. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on the desktop and get into creating our symbolic links. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to teach you about symbolic links. Uh, symbolic links are not a Linux only kind of thing. Windows has done it. It's actually MKLink is what they use in Windows. But for Linux, I like the symbolic links a little bit better because it's just a bit cleaner. So what it allows you to do is move things around on your system, but leave an old link, a symbolic link there to where you can easily reference it. Or better yet, let's say you've installed your program and you've run out of space. Like let's say you have a 50 gig game and you've installed it and everything's pointing to that one location, but you need to move. You need that 50 gigs for something else. Well, you can actually move that folder over somewhere else and then just create a symbolic link. And then next time you launch that game, it'll just launch from its new location, but the system itself still thinks it's in its old location. So with that said, uh, let's see here. Um, let's take a look at my home directory. I see the fixcam.sh. Now, technically, I like to have all that in actually script directory. So let's go ahead and make a make directory script and we'll move fixcam.sh over into that. So if we look at the listing, fixcam is not there. And if we go to script, we'll see that it is there. So with that, let's go ahead and launch uh, fixcam from here using a symbolic link. The actual link for the actual creating of the new file will be uh, ln for link, dash s for symbolic, and then this, you need to actually specify the path name of what you're linking. So we're going to do the home directory script. And then we'll go ahead and make this fix cam. And then that's going to come back to fixcam.sh where we're at. Now, if we do a listing, we'll see that we have sh or fixcam.sh. You see that the color's a little different. So if we do a long listing here, you'll see that you can actually see the actual link of where this is pointing to, but we can still actually use this file right here in this directory without any issues. So that's linking a file, which is pretty awesome. And to honestly, uh, to delete this link, we can just do remove fix cam. And if we do our long listing, you'll see that the symbolic links there, but if we do a ls of script, you'll see that fixed cam is in the script directory just fine. So pretty cool stuff. Um, that's just linking of the actual file. Now, if you're gonna go into actually doing other things, like let's go into the 256 NVMe directory and we'll go over to games. Now there's a couple games in here and I'm looking through and I'm like, okay, if I wanted to move one of these games to let's say my one terabyte directory, uh, in that games, I could easily do that and still reference it. 
I could move, like let's say I wanted to move Diablo directory over to the home of one TV games. And then from here we put Diablo. So we'll move this entire directory over there. All right, that game is now moved from the 256 NVMe drive to the one terabyte drive, which is a slower drive by a considerable margin. So with Diablo sitting over there, we can now create our link. So we'll do LN for the link, dash S for symbolic, and then we want the actual destination. So that's going to be our home, 1TB Dia or games, Diablo. Now we have that directory. We want to create a directory here for it. So we'll just make it Diablo forward slash or just Diablo for the directory. So now let's do our long listing. And you'll see that Diablo is now pointed to the one terabyte. Now let's go ahead and launch Lutris and see what happens when we go to Diablo. And if we go to configuration here, and we go to game options, you see that it's pointed to 256 NVMe. Well, we've moved it over to the one terabyte drive, but what happens when we launch this game? Let's go ahead and do it and find out. Pretty cool. I moved that entire game to a whole different drive, didn't have to update anything. All I did was create that symbolic link. Ah. Uh, Gorgeous. And there you have it. That's symbolic links in a nutshell. I absolutely love them. I use them all the time. Uh, one thing I didn't show in this video was actually I use them for creating save states. A lot of times if I'm using multiple computers and playing one game, uh, I'll like to actually symbolic link it to my Dropbox. And then those save files will just save right in my Dropbox. And then when I'm on the other computer, I'll do another symbolic link to that Dropbox. So anytime any of those computers would reference that game and do any kind of save files, it would save it in that one folder sitting there, which is pretty awesome. If you have Nextcloud or any other ones like OneDrive or Google Drive, uh, you can do the exact same thing, which is just so great because it just syncs everything for you. And then those symbolic links just act as reference points to all your save games across a whole multitude of computers that you might play it on. So that's just one other use case for it. And there's a ton of use cases for it in business, which I haven't really gone over, uh, such as moving programs and applications and those types of things. Um, but uh, that's just to give you kind of some ideas of the power of symbolic links. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make these videos. And I'll see you in the next one.